Thank you for the invitation. I am trying to give you a short overview of a, a group of lichens that seems to be uh, originated from an independent uh, lichenization event. So it's uh, the concept at least. Uh, the Arthoniomycetes, in contrast to other groups of fungi, are very peaceful organisms. Uh, they are living as lichens, they are subrobes, and if they are parasitic, they are not parasitic on man, they are not parasitic on animals, on plants, they are parasit parasitic on lichens. And perhaps, uh, th perhaps this is the reason why Arthoniomycetes have not been well studied. And there's uh, just a couple of people uh, studying Arthoniomycetes, and when they study them, then they often make long breaks in between. Uh, until they publish, and uh, in this talk I want to uh, present to you one of the recent publications on Arthoniomycetes, and uh, I hope you find it interesting. And the Arthoniomycetes are uh, not economically important, neither. So uh, the only species which was important was uh, Roxella species, which were used to produce uh, lacmus uh, or uh, stains for clothes, and uh, this uh, has... Uh, diminish the populations of uh, Roxellas in the Canary Islands uh, uh, drastically. So uh, while, uh, on the other hand, many of these species produce uh, fancy f uh, forms, pigments, they are gems in nature on barks, and uh, they produce a tremendous uh, diversity of uh, fruit body shapes. Uh, it is quite stunning uh, and was uh, always a, a big difficulty in classification. Uh, they are, as I said, mostly lichens, and classification criteria has, have been applied based on the thallus morphology to classify, uh, to bring them into families. And uh, the, the first character you can use is, is it crustose or is it uh, fruticos, is it folios, and so on. These were main characters. So uh, the classification was uh, fairly uh, simple, and uh, roxelaceae, for example, were uh, separated from athonia. Cryptotaceae and uh, Chrysotricaceae as crustose uh, families. Uh, and uh, now I will show you that uh, this has uh, drastically changed now. And, and, uh, there's not any brick on the other uh, at the moment in Arthoniomycetes. Uh, it's not only the shapes of uh, the ascomata which uh, uh, differs from uh, long lyrillate uh, forms to roundish forms or forms that form uh, they, they, uh, which build stromata and uh, nice little uh, osteoles uh, of fruit bodies. But there's also a chemical variation, and this is a scheme of a TLC, uh, which I did many, many years ago. And uh, just to show that there is a lot of pigments in Arthonia, and very, very few of these pigments have been classified. This is still a big dilemma here. We, we, we have no idea what these structures are, and they could be quite interesting. Most of them are kino, uh, quinone structures. This is an anthraquinone. These are isofurano, naphtoquinones. Uh, some of these are quite complex but we have no idea what these are. Yeah? But they could be quite interesting for a classification. I mean, never been studied. It's very difficult to uh, bring them into uh, these machines. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, most people relied on morphological, anatomical characters, uh, which I uh, also depicted in this uh, scheme here. But there was a, an early classification based on uh, the uh, uh, forms of uh, arrangement of carpocenters, uh, uh, as they were called. Uh, so there could be several carpocenters in one stroma. There could be one, uh, one single carpocenter with multiple asci, or carpocenters with single asci, and so on, and so on. It, it was very confusing at that time, 1990, something like this. And uh, this was before molecular studies uh, started at all. Uh, within uh, the family, we used characters of uh, the uh, ascomatal ontogeny and the shapes of uh, the assai, which uh, divide into four uh, categories, um, more or less well uh, distinct. And uh, the uniting part of all the Arthoniaceae was, oops, next, uh, the semi-physitunicate opening of the ascus. So it, uh, the ascus opens by a slit, uh, and the endoascus is uh, pushed forward, but not in the way uh, as it is done by physitunicate asti, because uh, the outer layers of the endoascus are not uh, uh, protruded as much as the inner ones. So it's a little bit different. And uh, this is also a character which uh, 
uh, is seen in another order that I will present in the Archogen Mysids today. Uh, and uh, so it's a, it's a uniting character and it uh, differs from the Ascus opening you usually see in Dothidiomycetes. Okay, and then uh, these forms, shapes of the Ascomata uh, were thought to be very distinct, but actually they are not. And uh, uh, all this depends on the growth of uh, Ascogigenus hyphae. And in this slide, I show you what, uh, what we did some years ago. Uh, that was to flip around an Ascoma from a folliculous lichen and to stain it with a fluorescent stain. And then uh, we were able to uh, observe the Ascogenus hyphae of these species in, uh, from the lower side. Yeah with an epifluorescence microscope. It was quite interesting because here you see, for the first time you see the typical croziers uh, of the Ascogenus hyphae, you see that they are spreading and it depends on the spreading how the fruit bodies develop. So this is a uh, Furagea filicina, which is now, uh, which was formerly Opegrapha filicina, follicular species. And you clearly see the Ascomata, uh, the Ascogenus hyphae spread towards uh, the edges of these fruit bodies and uh, the whole ontogeny of the fruit body follows the Ascogenus hyphae. And then there are cases where uh, the center uh, degrades uh, from Ascogenus, uh, from, from Asci, so it uh, spreads at the margins and you only see fresh Asci as formed at the margins, but after a while, after weeks, in, in older fruit bodies, you see that there's a secondary formation of Ascogenus hyphae in the center and they repeat the formation of Asci. It's, it's kind of an ascolocular Osco development, but uh, prolonged and with different shapes and forms. That makes the whole thing uh, qu uh, quite complicated for classification. And then there's a, a peculiar character, uh, which you see here. There's a fusion of the Ascogenus hyphae with the haploid uh, mycelium forming the fruit body stroma. That is quite interesting. I think, and uh, has, I, I don't know if this has been observed in other ascomycetes, but I, I thought, what is the significance of this uh, anastomosis between the karyotic and uh, haploid hyphae? I, I have no idea. This, these are the interesting things in artomyomycetes. Uh, which we don't understand at the moment, sorry. And uh, so the classification was quite confusing in the past and uh, there was a need for phylogenetic studies, of course, molecular, based on molecules. And uh, this was quite difficult because these uh, species are often very uh, fast degrading. So you need very fresh material for phylogenetic studies and you have to travel far in the tropics because most of them are in the tropics. It makes it a bit difficult or made it a bit difficult. And uh, the first uh, attempts to sequence from Arthonium ice, it's very difficult, I can tell. And, uh, but now uh, in uh, the last year, in August, uh, we were able to present uh, the Arthonialian challenge. <laughs> Uh, and try to restructure the Arthoniaceae uh, with a new phylogeny, which was based on uh, three genes at the moment. We, we can't do more uh, at present. And this uh, shows you the outline of Arthoniomycetes uh, as we see it at present. So there are now the families Arthoniaceae, Opigraphaceae, Roxelaceae, Roxelographaceae, Lecanographaceae, the Chrysotricaceae, and some clades, which we have not formally classified as uh, at, at, a tax, uh, at a taxonomic degree, uh, because we are not uh, completely sure what to do with them. Uh, I will go briefly through these clades. I'm sorry, what is that? Right, doesn't do anything. Within our th oops, 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 too hectic. Yeah, I'm very enthusiastic about it. And uh, so in the Arthoniaceae, we have uh, uh, groups that were called Cryptotasio clade, uh, Arthonia clade, and uh, Spaditia clade, uh, which I will show you. The first one, the Cryptotasio it clade, is a clade which uh, contains species which do not really form. Uh, well-defined ascomata. The ascia spread throughout the whole area of the thallus. They are single, 
But uh, it, so that was the concept of classification in the past. So since uh, a lot of Cryptotasia uh, species are included here, we kept the name Cryptotasioid subclade. Uh, but in fact, there are other species which uh, form well-defined fruit bodies, uh, like this one here, Pacnolepia pruinata. This is treated another genus. And uh, also, uh, silomycid, which was formerly placed in Foma, yeah, is, uh, shows up as a part of this uh, Arthoniomycetes clade, which is quite interesting. It is like in parasite, of course. And uh, so it's kind of scrambled up for morphology. Morphology is not a very good predictor of phylogenetic relationship here. And this is the common pattern we see in all the, uh, sub in all the remaining subclades here. We have an um, image of the type species of Arthoniomycetes, Arthonia radiata. That's uh, nicely placed here, but we also have uh, Hyphomycete in the same group, which lacks any uh, fertile character, is, uh, is just uh, a mass of dark hyphae which parasitizes Graphis uh, species. And we have nicely pigmented uh, species. Uh, this is Arthonia, or now Coniocarpon cinnabarinum. And as you see here, the genera, but we, here we have Arthonia, here we have Arthonia, uh, Athonia is not at all monophyletic, still not. So there's a lot of work waiting for us to reclassify these groups. And uh, that's a bit tricky, of course. And then as a species which was formerly placed in opigraphy, uh, opigrapha, uh, because it has a very distinct margin of the fruit body. Normally, Athonias don't have any margin of the fruit body. Here we have a distinct margin, and everybody classified this as uh, uh, opigrapha. It was shown some years ago by Damian Ertz uh, and co-authors that uh, this species is well placed in Athonia and the ascus resembles much more Athonia asci and also the pigments of the uh, ascomata are fairly the same as you find in this Athonia clade. So it fit, it, in fact, it fits very well, but it does not fit the uh, interpretation of morphological characters that we earned from the past. And... Uh, the real mess is this clade here, briefly go back, because this, as you see, have, has a very long branch, and this just shows there's a poor sampling. Uh, we expect that a lot of tropical species will go into this clade, but this is the, the work of the future, and I hope I can uh, uh, make people interested in this uh, very nice group, and I hope that uh, especially lichenologists in the tropics will start to work on these. Then we have another clade, the Bryostigma clade, which was not classified, uh, but this one is very interesting because uh, it, it, all species here have these blackish uh, uh, spot-like fruit bodies, very simple forms. This seems like a, a reduction line, which we also see in the other clades, but here is it, is it, it is dominant, and all, uh, most of these species here are like a Nicolos. So that's a unifying character for, for this clade, but we mm, still did not classify it at a family level. Right? We, I, I prefer to keep it within our Thony ACC. And then, of course, is uh, these other families which I mentioned, and uh, you see they are uh, uh, diverse for morphologies. So you see the same thing in Roxelaceae, which have these uh, nice shrubby forms, but also uh, crust-like forms which grow on leaves in the tropics, and uh, fruit bodies which are fairly elongated, branched, and uh, have a waxy uh, surface. This shows the morphology is weird. And here, in this, especially in Roxelaceae, we have a mix of crustal species, of, uh, of uh, folios and of, of uh, fruticose species. Talos, neither, is not a good character. It is a repeated evolution from crustose to uh, uh, fruticose forms, and probably vice versa. Uh, here, uh, two small families, Roxelographici and uh, Lecanographici, uh, which uh, have, uh, I wouldn't say boring fruit bodies, but it's not very diverse here, but uh, uh, they are kept at, as different families right now because they are clading uh, far outside of uh, the other uh, uh, taxa here. Uh, and at the basis of all 
the Arthonielis, we have an interesting clade, which is Chrysotricaceae. That was always kept a little bit def different because it has uh, these yellowish uh, pigments, which are pulvinic acids. Uh, that, that's something we know about the pigments. Uh, and uh, But there is also another clade, which is called the Philippus clade, which has not been classified at a family level. And this one contains reddish spot-like fruit bodies, but also blackish spot-like fruit bodies. This pigment is not a good character either. But again, we have these simple fruit bodies, spot-like, small, black, nothing else than asci, and uh, some paraphyses in them. And it seems to be a common pattern that uh, there is a reduction to very simple forms. And uh, as far as I uh, know, this is also the case in other lineages of lichens like uh, Acrosporaceae. We have repeated return to uh, carbonized simple forms. I don't know what this uh, suggests at the end. Uh, now we have the scaffold of a phylogenetic tree in Arthoniomycetes, and uh, it's uh, the next step will be to add more taxa to this tree. And you you can actually make a quiz or a guess uh, where would they turn, uh, where would they show up in the tree? And it's sometimes quite surprising. Uh, this uh, species is. Uh, 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 recombined uh, and will appear in a paper together with uh, André Abtrud uh, and uh, co-authors uh, in Phytotaxa. It's a fantastic collaboration we had uh, on this uh, species here. And uh, it has these wonderful orange uh, pigments and uh, spores that are muriform. That, that was an old character, spore septation. You, you can forget it. And uh, uh, this species uh, is now placed in uh, the cryptotasioid clade of Arthoniaceae, which is, makes sense because cryptotasia has uh, kind of similar spores, uh, the pigmentation, well, uh, it's usually whitish in uh, cryptotasia, but the overall impression is, oh, that fits quite well. And the other species, uh, the other species that we tried to place were members of the genus uh, Conia artonia, which I described in 2001. Uh, and they are characterized here, as you see, uh, by hymenia, which do not have any <coughs> hymenial gel. They are completely dry. They're completely hydrophobic. And I thought this is something that would place them ideally in, uh, in the vicinity of cryptotasium. Uh, but this is not true. Uh, it actually shows up in this Philippus clade. Uh, that was kind of surprising. Uh, and the uh, only related species uh, were uh, reddish pigmented species, which had a compact and hydrophilic uh, hymenium. So uh, you still have surprises. And uh, the other interesting thing that I wanted to present to you today is about the root of the Arthonielis. What is at the basis of Arthonielis? And this is also fairly interesting. Uh, we had a look at Lycanicolus fungi, as you saw in the talk before, looking on what is in lichens, it can be quite interesting. And as uh, about uh, 1,500 described and expected 3,000 of uh, species of fungi uh, produce structures on lichens, which you can uh, use for classification by phenotypic characters. And uh, one of uh, these uh, lichenicolous uh, hips, sorry, fungi are the pair of Pheosporobolus usnei, which is a um, uh, hyphomycete. This uh, produces uh, conidia, which are, have this uh, meristematic impression. And on the other hand, on the same species of lichen, you find fruit bodies of something that has been termed lichenostigma morari, a very interesting species. And the ascus has a completely similar opening uh, mechanism as we find in Arthoniomycetes. And in fact, uh, the phylogenetic study confirms uh, that they have some relationship and uh, those two things are grouped uh, uh, together. So what's the uniting character then? So here are the Pheosporobolus species and uh, we have also this fertile form, Lichenostigma morris. So this is an anamorph telemorph relationship here. Uh, and they were classified in the Pheococcomycetaceae in the past, and they seem to be at the uh, sister group of Arthonium, uh, Arthonielis, yeah, within Arthoniomycetes. And the uniting character is that here 
in lichenostigma, the ascomata and cotingiomata are, ent are entirely made of uh, agglomeration of spherical cells which are produced by budding. It's completely different from what we uh, see otherwise in Arthonielis. And uh, that's quite unique among fungi to make a fruit body uh, out of spherical budding cells. Mm -hmm. And then inside you produce ascii. And it led to the description of uh, Lichino stigma talis as a new order in Erz 2013, fungal diversity. And this seems to be the basal sister group of Arthoniomycetes. Yeah. And the outgroup were trip tripetelialis uh, here. The conclusions are that many species of Arthoniaceae are still to be included in the tree, especially the tropical ones, uh, but we can use the present phylogeny as a, a, a sampling guide. Yeah, and then see what uh, is uh, showing up uh, yeah, with the groups that we don't understand morphologically. Uh, lifestyle. Many, in many lineages of Arthonielis, we find like a Nicholas fungi. This is not something that is monophyletic. Yeah? It's, it's reoccurring. And morphology too. So morphology is not a good predictor of uh, higher level phylogenetic uh, relationship that seems to be very, very flexible. But we see some common patterns. We see that groups that we understood as species group are also monophyletic in the tree. We have, so we have a parallel evolution in many characters recurrent and a recurrent simplification of ascomatal designs. Uh, there seems to be a basic bow plan to which species may return when they, uh, why? When they don't want to do any other thing. Uh, at the end, uh, in classifications, and this is a meeting on Ascomycetes systematics, so I'm, I think I have to bring this in the conclusion too. We have two orders in Arthoniomycetes now and uh, six accepted families. And we are unsecure whether we should uh, uh, accept more, but this depends on the future status. At present, we are a few people in teaming up uh, to understand uh, the phylogeny of Arthonium acids, and I uh, express my sincere thanks to Andreas Frisch, who was the first author of this phylogeny, and I hope he will soon get a job somewhere. And uh, Damian Ertz uh, from Belgium, of course, is the co-author in the talk, uh, and our sensei, Jürgen Thor, is, uh, so to say, the master here uh, behind all the activities and networks. And uh, then uh, as a very nice, fantastic cooperation we had on the recent papers uh, placing the new species uh, together with André, who is in the audience, and Marcela Caceres from Brazil. And I thank my university for supporting me to come here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. The floor is open for questions. Martin, I noticed in a number of your trees that um, at your, what we could call a species level, yep. uh, with a straight line, the same name, you have some really wide, yes, disparate yes. geographic yes. distributions. I wonder if you could just comment on that. Uh, I think. Yeah, that, that's really a very interesting question, and I doubt that the species are uh, very widely distributed. I, I don't believe in transcontinental distributions of Arthonielis, uh, and I rather think they are forming very fine uh, uh, groups, but at, at present we can't resolve this. But I think they have very local adaptation patterns, and they could develop locally as species. And a good sign for this is we have, we have one of these conio arthonia, uh, conio carpon species, which have these uh, fancy uh, uh, pigments, crimson pigments. And this species uh, is characterized by the production of psoromic acid as an additional chemical uh, character and has fairly clear characters, uh, narrow spores, and uh, straight uh, lirelli. So it looked quite clear, yeah? and this species you only find on Sabal Palmetto in uh, Florida. That is a very restricted distribution. And the same I find in other uh, representatives of conio carbon. And I've, 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 I would have a couple of examples for species which have a very local distribution. In one case, it's just uh, one uh, slope of a tropical rainforest nowhere else in the world. 
I think it's just a, a chimera that we have these transcontinental distributions. I think they're very local. David? That was a, a very nice presentation, uh, Martin. As you know, I've worked on some of these like Nicholas things for many years. And if I I'd not check the papers, I didn't know you're going to talk about it. But I think the uh, Lycanostigma spherobolus thing we actually suspected when we described the genus in '78. So yes. I think it's quite, it's quite a long history that. Yes, yes, yeah. Because uh, there was such a similarity with the host. And Absolutely, so on, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Found any definite proof of connection? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>